Thank you very much, comrades. I respond to the name Comrade Ostalos, manufactured in heaven, panel picking and investors in Zimbabwe. I stand before you, comrades, to articulate on the historic narrative of Zimbabwe National Students Union. I know myself representing part of the technical team that is organizing this conference, but I myself, being a revolutionary, have been tasked to speak fundamentally on the historic narrative of the student movement and the national question. Comrades, in 1980, Zimbabwe attains its independence. After that juncture, the student movement was formed at the University of Zimbabwe in what was popularly known as the Union, led by the then president, Comrade Ago Tambara, now a professor of robotics. <clears throat> the student movement came at a time when the nation was facing a very huge crisis and answering to the then national question, which was the democratic democratization of Zimbabwe. I will tell you one of the most experiences of the student movement at that juncture was the Willowcate scandal, which was popularly known as the Willowcate scandal, where one of the greatest scandals of corruption was seen at the early days of the birth of this country, which was led by the then energetic Robert Gabriel Mugabe as the chancellor of all state institutions by then the investors now. For the first time, students were arrested, sent to school to maximum prison, and that gave birth to what was called the Revolutionary Command Council, which was formed in solidarity with the arrested students, uh, where Munyarat Kisai and the Professor Mdambar were arrested. In 1996, when the economic crisis started looming in the country, and the government began to adopt <coughs> structural adjustment policies, the student movement organized itself in 1996 to form the Zimbabwe National Student Union, went to a Congress in 1997, elected the then late Lenmo Chuta Jongwe to be the president of the institution. Lenmo Jongwe led the institution from the University of Zimbabwe in 1996, capitalized by Daniel Molukele, then known as Fortune and the first law of the union being a comrade Brian Kapoor. One of the most striking figures and the issues of that particular moment was the quest for democracy in this country, where the labor, labor movement, the student movement, and the civil society converged to rethink the national question. Most of the current student leaders and the recent former are not privy of the historic narrative and the political dynamics that led to the formation of Zimbabwe National Students Union. It was popularly formed to represent the socialist a movement within the student movement and the fight for the creation of indicator in Zimbabwe. Comrade Lenin Jongwe fought a very good fight, including the most cru crucial debate of our lifetime, which is the formation of the then vibrant movement for democratic change, which was a cocktail of the civil society, the student movement, and uh, the labor movement, uh, specifically the Zimbabwe Congress of Trade Union. <coughs> what transpired then was the fight for academic freedom, congomulated at a broad national level, and advancing the voice of the students at the vanguard of the voiceless in our whole body politic in this country. The pattern stick was exchanged by different generations and different streams of history. We saw the coming in of Hope of Kumbo, we saw the coming in of uh, the likes of Clever Men. We saw the coming in of the likes of Obed Masaraure, Pride in Kono, uh, different Vilani Zamchia, uh, and the other comrades. Uh, and of course, in the not so distant uh, years, with Gilbert Mtumui, elected to lead the Zimbabwe National Students Union and held his Congress. Um, <laughs> that debate uh, was presented by Comrade Pandu and the National Executive President here thereof. 
one of the most striking figures of my experience in student activism was the fight for freedom at the then illustrious University of Zimbabwe. But of the lessons that I've learned in student activism is the fundamental question, why do we fight? Why do we fight for academic freedom? And lessons that I thought must be shared based on my experience is that the student movement is directly linked to the national question. Academic freedom cannot be achieved in our lifetime without understanding the national political question. Going forward, the nation is faced with a more sophisticated political and economic uh, transition that features itself in a competitive authoritarian regime which has been running this country since then. And when students separate themselves from that na national question, I think there will be a very, very huge crisis. When we graduated from the University of Zimbabwe, we formed uh, the hashtag movement. Some joined and formed the Zimbabwe Yard Soka, and some formed this flag, and we decided to form hashtag the Jamunga Sesjivile, which uh, for me was one of the most vibrant uh, social movements to my image in the path of this country. But part of the experiences that we got from the student movement was that the students have the capacity to liberate this country out of the jaws of dictatorship, kleptocracy, nihilism, suppression and oppression of the citizens of this country. And the fundamental keyism that forms the basis of our struggle as the enemy of the society is Robert Gabriel Esther Mugabe. <laughs> <laughs> um, I once said it when I was at the University of Zimbabwe that Robert Mugabe represents the highest magnitude of human oppression. And being the chancellor of state institutions, he has to be or was to be challenged by enemies necessary or unnecessary. In 2004, the Zimbabwe National Students Union gathered in a congress in Bulawayo, in a place called in Jubasem, of Court, and passed in Jube declaration that Robert Mugabe has declared the first enemy of the students and the entire cosmos, and he has to be removed by enemies necessary or unnecessary. <laughs> students decided to march under the hashtag, uh, anyone can say those students of history uh, can remind other comrades here of the hashtag that led uh, to the attempted assassination on the life of President Wan, now Dr. Bilan Zamchi. Comrade Dachi. It was popularly known as the final push, which gave birth to a new real upbeat, practically different Zimbabwe, in terms of the fight for a democratic Zimbabwe. Comrade uh, Tsangrai, the then leader of the Zimbabwe Congress of Trade Union, and a member of the National Constitutional Assembly, was arrested. And the final push was a nail led by the student movement that we were taking it upon ourselves to liberate the people of this country. The final push resolution saw students marching to state house. The state declared the student movement the first enemy of the state. But in that particular fashion, the students declared Robert Mugabe the first enemy of progressive citizens in this country. The student movement did not tie against the fight for democracy. Congress that came out, as I've said, because of that strategic relation with the opposition movement, students' movement led one of the most organic demonstrations in this country, which was popularly known as the Fridays. The Fridays were checked the red, where basically the students declared a Black Friday that happened and shut down this country every Friday of that particular month when the government had just adopted ESA. The land reform itself was a byproduct of the student movement. I remember one of the greatest quotations by the most organic professor from Zambia quoted and actually wrote a book that was titled Fight My Beloved Comrades. 
a revolutionary pamphlet <coughs> that I then adopted some time back last year and dedicated to the students in Michigan State University, where we basically articulated uh, why students at this particular historic moment must fight. <coughs> I will jump to the current national question that we face. Most institutions in this country today are schizophrenic of what we call the national question. This is the reason why there is no one who is able to capture what I call the conscious of the moment. The student movement from 1999 up to 2006 were able to capture and speak to the conscience of the moment. And were able to mobilize and radicalize citizens to fight for their own freedom. That gave birth to the birth of the 2013 constitution. Where there is an old one in new bottles, that is a constitutional debate for another day. But one of the most fundamental and striking contributions of the student movement in the democratization of this country was the realization of freedom in its totality. That is the freedom that we have dedicated ourselves to even if we have graduated from tertiary institution. And those are ideas that most of us are willing to die for. The student movement in the fight for freedom faces difficulties. Number one, lack of solidarity. Number two, lack of ideological clarity. One of the books that was written by Hitler had the longest titles in the history of literature, but was then renamed I mean, Gap Students of History can relate to that. But it spoke critically to betrayal, backbiting that happens, and what Massimilia Stoli calls the struggle within the struggle. The student movement goes through those processes, but like a spirit, it does not die. The ideas of Lenin Mojongi remain hovering, waiting for those who are willing to take those ideas forward and liberate the students. One of the greatest realizations of our lifetime is that in a struggle, people have to be very much dedicated and be ideologically armed. Without ideas, I said it sometime last year that without ideas, social movement, for all information, Zimbabwe National Students Union is one of the greatest social movements in Southern Africa. Social movements in their very nature, they feed from the blood of ideas. That's why Adam Tamara writing after the fall of socialism said that the union who subscribe itself cognizant of the recent events in Eastern Europe will remain subscribing to Marxism, Leninism, which equals itself to scientific socialism. Without a proper ideological backbone, the union cannot sustain itself in the fight for academic freedom. I said it last year in the best of the greatest enjoyment of social movement that without ideas, these institutions are going to be changed into cannibalistic institutions and growth-making organizations, which will get itself to non-governmental organizations. And at this very same time, neglecting the very same students that they seek to represent. Therefore, I urge Congress at this juncture that without ideas, and if the Union does not go back to the founding principles of Marxism, Leninism, and subscribe itself to scientific socialism, it will not liberate the student movement. Socialism speaks to number one, free education. Number two, equal opportunities for all. Those are the gist of the fight for academic freedom. And without students who are willing to program themselves around the Qatarship development, the union will not go back to its eight days when the investors of could be shut down by a mere vanguard and that comes from another institution to liberate the students in their lifetime. There are many fights that came in the institution. As you all know, that Zinaso holds, according to the constitution, the founding document in 1997 and these edited versions speaks to the holding of a biannual congress, which has been witnessed since 1997 to this date. But the most striking experience of congresses of Zinaso is the fight and divisions on ideas. At one moment in time, there were students who were divided over the constitution-making process divided over 
the formation of the movement for democratic change. Divided to over the introduction of different labor views and different university acts. That is the character of different institutions in the fight for academic freedom. And everything is not a new, but it revolves in time. But one of the most striking issues that I see prevailing today is the relevance of ICTs in this fight for academic freedom, which is something which was not there as a mobilizing tool. I believe that the union has capacity to mobilize students to fight for academic freedom using ICTs. In one of my dissertations, for masters, I wrote <coughs> that while it's their government gangsters, in this case, cause, for example, a part of those who abducted us, tortured us, and sentenced us in part of the rooms in Robert Mugabe's house of terror, is that those gangsters are holding guns, while it's in that other end, as students holding their iPhones and throwing tweets. Why did those are throwing bullets? So it's always a battle between ideas, bullets, between vagabonds and ideologically apt comrades. That is what they call the bullet or the barrel. Those who still believe that the bullet or the bullet can be mighter than the pain have been proven otherwise by the revolvement of ICTs. And it is one of the most striking features of the mobilizing tool in the fight for the That's why most of us spend their time in the streets of Twitter, going to the Facebook, and the underground and Instagram, trying to share with the nation around that which is happening in the fight for democracy in our life. So lastly, I obviously speak to the life of a graduate, graduating from the student movement. As I said, we left universities um, joined the broad civil society movement and formed part of the organic movement to fight against dictatorship. And as long as the detector is still breathing, the struggle for freedom is to continue under party. I believe that the few comrades that have managed to gather here today are going to take it upon themselves to introspect, reflect and consider on the fight for freedom directly into the national question. I know there are going to be very much eloquent speakers who are going to come and be able to articulate the national crisis and the role of the student movement. But one of the things I have confidence in is that the world is never changed by a million, but a few comrades with an ideological clarity and the vision of what should be done. Without that question on what should be done, the students will never progress and the nation will never progress in their own. Therefore, I'll conclude by saying, comrades, let us fight for academic freedom, liberate the students. Check over one said it categorically clear that there are no liberators. I'm not a liberator myself. The people liberate themselves. And comrades, Prince Fanon said it clearly and speaking to this generation, writing in this book, The Richard of the Earth, that each generation must, out of relative obscurity, discover his mission, fulfill it or betray. Those messages were portrayed by comrades Thomas Angara that a soldier without ideological clarity is a potential criminal. Therefore, comrades, with those words, I say, I'm not And I urge you, comrades, to fight. And I have faith that the comrades are going to fight in their corners for academic freedom. And we are there to support in the spirit in the physical and passively and actively in the support for academic freedom and the fight for democracy and specifically the fight against Robert Mugabe. Because Robert Mugabe represents the mother of all troubles, the mother of all shenanigans. He represents the mother of all oppression that he never visited this motherland since the fall of Hitler. Therefore, he had to be fought by enemies necessary and by those words I say I look to continue to create eliminate that. Boy, government, boy, comrades, boy. <laughs>